All right, so let's get started with our next section. This is Chapter 28, Section 1, Post-War Social Changes, and we're talking about the social changes after World War I, so the Roaring Twenties. On this cover, you'll see Albert Einstein. You'll see the development of Hollywood and also the automobile. Uh, certainly some stills from early movies, silent movies on the right-hand side, but you'll also see baseball, which becomes important in the 1920s, and the Bronx Bombers. Uh, Babe Ruth and the 1927 Yankees. So let's get started. Our objectives. Analyze how Western society changed after World War I. Describe the literary and artistic trends that emerged in the 1920s. We'll also look at several advancements in modern scientific thought and in scientific development. So our focus question, what changes did Western society and culture experience after World War I? Well, the experience of World War I really were shattering the hope and the expectation that had been around in the Western society since the Enlightenment. Uh, it really changed the way things work. It was very much a, almost a rude awakening for people. And think about how many people were involved and the destruction that happened in Europe. It really was something of a wake-up call. In science, discoveries during this time changed the way people understood the world. We see this reflected in music, literature, and the fine arts of the time, certainly in other aspects of culture as well. Uh, the world was changed, and the culture that was existing before the war is no longer represented in this new world after World War I. So think about World War I as truly a turning point from the old world into the modern era. During the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, new technologies changed the way people lived in the world. Some of these changes included affordable cars. We see cars being mass-produced, and we'll talk next year about Henry Ford, but mass-produced, which means they also cost less. So even the people in the factories making the cars would be able to afford them, not just for the wealthy. Telephones are developed, so we see communication much more possible from point A to point B. Motion pictures, silent motion pictures initially, uh, both as a mode of sharing news and information, but also as entertainment. Radio has a boom time in the 1920s. The number of households with radios is just off the charts during this time. And Cincinnati, as you'll learn next year, plays a, a very significant role in the development of radio with Powell Crosley. We also see the invention and the widespread use of devices in the home that were very used used to at this point and we take for granted. Things like washing machines and vacuum cleaners uh, allow people to get things done more quickly in their home and allow for much more leisure time. All of these advances help create a mass culture. The 1920s is very much a consumer driven decade. Jazz music emerges in the 1920s. A new type of music it combines Western harmonies with African rhythms. We have people like Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington uh, developing these. We have nightclubs where the sounds of jazz represent freedom, uh, improvisation, a lot, uh, sort of a loosening of the strict moral standards of the previous generations. Young people truly embrace jazz, much as in the 1950s young people embrace rock and roll. It's very much a rejection of these sort of tight, strict Victorian values in the 1920s, in addition to be called the, the Roaring Twenties, is also known as the Jazz Age. We mentioned this in previous sections, women and their significant contribution during World War I. In many of these Western countries, women after the war earned the right to vote. Despite this change, overall progress in the equality of women in Western countries was relatively slow. There were some new opportunities, uh, but it wasn't, wasn't significant uh, for the majority of them. Some women reject sort of this traditional structure and become what we call flappers. And you can recognize flappers by both the lifestyle, much more free and easy, uh, but also in the fashion, the hats, the very straight dresses, um, 
going out and dancing the, the particular styles of dance as well. Flappers, flappers begin in the United States, but the fashion and the lifestyle spreads to Europe as well. There were some career opportunities for women outside the home. Uh, after the, the men came back and took their places, resumed their positions in the factories, primarily in the service industry and in the cleric, clerical positions. Uh, so we begin to see some movement, but again, it's not going to be uh, all that significant, but it is the beginning of a movement toward more equality. Not everyone approved of these lifestyle changes, this openness, this uh, freedom that was happening in the 1920s, and we see that reflected in a few different places. One is in the passage of the 18th Amendment, establishing prohibition here in the United States. Now, there had been something called a temperance movement all through the 1800s into the early 1900s, and finally it comes to fruition in the 18th Amendment. The 18th Amendment, now it is an amendment, so it is part of the Constitution, and it was approved by uh, the requisite number of states. It outlaws the production and sale of alcoholic beverages. Again, a very significant impact on Cincinnati. Cincinnati, with its German heritage, was uh, very much both a consumer and a producer of primarily beer, uh, but alcoholic beverages. So a great impact when prohibition went into, into effect in Cincinnati. Now, prohibition causes a reaction to happen, and that is in the explosion of what are called speakeasies, which are illegal nightclubs or bars where alcoholic beverages would have been sold. We also see organized crime come together as a result of prohibition, uh, primarily to uh, distribute and sell alcoholic beverages. Uh, Al Capone in Chicago and other members of organized crime come into prominence during this time frame, not just dealing with alcohol, but uh, that is one of the primary drivers for this. We also see a reaction to the loosening up of the social mores in the 1920s in other ways. We have Christian fundamentalists who fight against the teaching of evolution in their schools. We have the Scopes Monkey Trial in Tennessee where John Scopes was convicted of teaching evolution uh, in the school which was against the local Tennessee law. Now the Scopes Mon Monkey Trial was significant, it took place in 1925. Again, John Scopes was accused of violating a Tennessee law which made it illegal to teach evolution in any state-funded school. The trial truly was at the time, to use an overused phrase, the trial of the century. Uh, national reporters flocked to Dayton, Tennessee to cover this big-name trial and to witness the two big-name lawyers that agreed to represent each side. On one side we had William Jennings Bryan. He had run for president a couple of elections prior to this, so he was very well known. On the defense side, we had Clarence Darrow, who was well known for some of the criminal defendants that he had defended over time. The trial pitted against each other modernists, who said evolution is consistent with religion, against fundamentalists, who believe that the Word of God is true fact and it's revealed as truth as written in the Bible and that takes priority over all human knowledge. This is a controversy that we still have in different parts of the country in the United States today. The Scopes trial was seen both as a, a theological contest but also a trial as to the veracity and the importance of modern science with regards to the creation evolution controversy. In the end, Scopes was convicted of violating the law. Literature after World War I also had a different focus from what it had been earlier during the Victorian times and the writings from that time. A lot of these writings reflect the experience of the writers in the war in World War I. Many of these portray the modern world as barren of spirituality. Others try totally different approaches, writing what we call a stream of consciousness without any form or logic. You may recognize some of these books from what you've read or will read here at UA. We also have during this time an amazing colorful uh, movement 
coming out of Harlem, New York, uh, the Harlem Renaissance, African American writers and musicians and artists really reviving and developing uh, the black culture. Uh, truly something of a renaissance. Science also has significant change during this time. Long-held ideas about nature are challenged through different scientific discoveries. Through the works of Marie Curie, Albert Einstein, Enrico Fermi, we discover atomic fusion and the benefits and certainly the power of atomic fusion. In medicine, the Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming discovers penicillin. Sigmund Freud and his explorations of psychoanalysis changes the way people perceive the world around them. And we'll talk more about Freud, and you certainly will be familiar with Freud if you take psychology in your junior or senior year. Art also undergoes drastic changes here in the 1920s after the war. It becomes much more abstract and intellectual as artists reject the traditional structure and organization that we've seen in previous times. Some examples of abstract art. Two specific movements that we want to be familiar with, Dadaism and Surrealism, emerge and change the way people think about art. Dadaism first and then Surrealism on the lower right. Surrealist sculpture in the upper left and again Dadaism in the lower left. Very different from what we've seen before. So the trauma of World War I propels many people to change the way they think about the world. Again, think about how dramatic the World War with all its damage and all its involvement by so many people had been. The 1930s is seen as something of a lost generation because of the impact of these changes. And very soon after, in the 1930s, they will face a very new and very challenging crisis. Science, medicine, politics, art, music, and architecture all drive this evolution. Again, the 1920s is a prelude to what we'll see in the 1930s in the next section when we talk about the Depression which is not just a factor here in the United States, but also around the world. Our terms, flapper, a young woman who rejects the moral values of the Victorian era in favor of new exciting freedoms, uh, certainly reflected in the lifestyle, in the fashion of the times, begins here in the United States and spreads to Europe. Prohibition, the outlaw of the manufacture and sale of alcoholic beverages and prohibition here in the United States leads to the, de the development of organized crime but also to speakeasies which are illegal bars and nightclubs. The Harlem Renaissance, African-American cultural awakening coming out of Harlem, New York, part of New York City. Uh, African-American music, art, literature, all reflecting this cultural awakening. And remember, a lot of this black population, and you'll learn more about this next year in U.S. history, uh, have moved from the South and resettled in the industrial cities of the North. Uh, and this is a very rich time. Psychoanalysis, developed by Sigmund Freud, studying how the mind works and treating mental disorders. We still see psychoanalysis in modern science and medicine today. In art, abstract art, composed of lines, colors, shapes, sometimes with no recognizable subjects. So very different from the realist art that we've talked about in previous sections. Uh, two types of art, Dada, rejects all con traditional conventions and organization and structure, a very much free form and very abstract. Surrealist art, attempts to portray the inner workings of the unconscious mind. So when you're looking at a surrealistic piece of art, it might be something that you would appear in a dream that just seems partly real and partly unreal. Surrealistic art. So that is section one.